litany and anti-communion. The litany is sung to the five-part setting by Thomas Tallis. The Kyrie and Creed come from the communion service in G by Sir Charles Villiers Stanford, and the service ends with the setting of Christus Factus Est by Anerio. Christ was made for us obedient unto death, even to death on the cross. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy upon us miserable sinners. and circumcision, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation. By thy agony and blood is by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, 
by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our wealth, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, we sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church universal in the right way. it may please thee to keep and strengthen in the true worshipping of thee, in righteousness and holiness of life, thy servant Elizabeth, our most gracious Queen and Governor. That it may please thee to rule her heart in thy faith, fear, and love, and that she may evermore have a fire in thee, and ever seek thy honor and glory. That it may please thee to be her defender and keeper, giving her the victory over all her enemies. That it may please thee to bless and preserve Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, the Prince and Princess of Wales, and all of the royal family. That it may please thee to illuminate all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. That it may please thee to endure the High Court of Parliament and all the ministers of the crown, with grace, wisdom, and understanding. That it may please you to bless and keep the magistrates, giving them grace to execute justice and to maintain truth. it may please thee to bless and prosper the forces of the Queen by sea, land, and air, and to shield them in all dangers and adversity. That it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. and concord. That it may please thee to give us an heart to love and dread thee, and diligently to live after thy commandments. That it may please thee to give to all thy people increase of grace, to hear meekly thy word, and to receive it with pure affection, and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. That it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived. That it may please thee to strengthen such 
pleasure to send and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and to raise up them that fall and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. That it may please you to succor, help, and comfort all that are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. It may please you to preserve all that travel by land or by water or by air, all women laboring of child, all sick persons and young children, and to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives. It may please thee to defend and provide for the fatherless children and widows, and all that are desolate and oppressed. That it may please thee to have mercy upon all men. That it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. That it may please thee to give and preserve to our youth the kindly fruits of the earth, so as in due time we may enjoy them. That it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endure us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, to amend our lives according to thy holy word. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, 
extends the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we beseech thee graciously to behold this thy family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was contented to be betrayed and given up into the hands of wicked men and to suffer death upon the cross, who now liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all the states of men in thy holy church, that every member of the same in his vocation and ministry may truly and godly serve thee through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The epistle is written in the 10th chapter of the epistle to the Hebrews, beginning at the 11th verse. And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. For when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, then to wait until his enemies should be made a stool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For after saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws on their hearts, and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their misdeeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way which he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more 
as you see the day drawing near. Here ends the epistle.
the Holy Gospel is written in the 19th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the first verse. Then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no crime in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. And when the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him for I find no crime in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard these words, he was the more afraid. He entered the praetorium again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, You will not speak to me. Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Upon this Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement and in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out to him, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priests of the Jews then said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did this. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, and when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. 
And when Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, in order to prevent the bodies from remaining on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they have pierced.
let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole council and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate.
peace of God which passeth all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always Amen. That service of litany and anti-communion came direct from Hereford Cathedral. The litany was sung by the vicar choral, the Reverend Philip Barrett, and the celebrant was the dean, the very Reverend Peter Haynes. The cathedral choir was directed by Roy Massey, and the organ was played by David Briggs. <laughs> 